There are few times in life when you meet somebody who's very similar to yourself. And as you explore your similarities, a lot of differences are also revealed. One such time happened to me in January 2018 while living in Hatyai. That's when I met Murat. Murat was a traveler from Istanbul. Initially, he had requested to stay with me for three days, but those couple of days turned into two weeks. And then, those two weeks weren't quite enough either, and so he rented a room down the street for about another month. Murat was a big city kid, but being from different places, we also shared great similarities. One area where our interests crossed was dancing. Murat loved to dance to funk and soul music. Not only that, but he was also a filmmaker who liked filming dance in public. His dancing in public videos were strikingly resemblant to my own dance activism. We were very excited to work on a dance project together. One day, Murat and I undertook an adventure to Songkla town. The plan was to spend one night there while getting footage of dancing in the streets. Songkla has a lot of street art, and street art is always a suitable background for dancing. We packed our bags and left. From the dozens of couch surfers who had stayed at my place, I had heard various stories of travelers staying at temples in Thailand. I told Murat about this, and we decided to ask some monks at a temple if we could stay there overnight. We reached Songkla and walked to the old town where I knew there would be some temples. We came across a temple and went inside, hoping to meet some kind monks. Contrary to whom we had thought we would find inside, there was a group of ordinary people. They looked like they had just had an event and were now packing up. There were no monks in sight. I got their attention and asked them in Thai if we could stay there for the night. It was as if they had rehearsed the possibility of such a question long before we came, because all of them shouted back at the same time, yelling, No! No! Disappointed, we left the temple. I told Murat that we should just get a hotel room and that I would pay for it. Murat insisted that we stick by our initial idea of finding alternative accommodation. We went back and forth discussing what we could do. Before we decided on where to sleep, we ended up doing what we had gone there to do. We danced by the mermaid statue at Samila Beach. Murat also demonstrated his spinning. Finally, we ended up sleeping on benches at a park near the beach. We woke up to sounds of tennis balls and monkey chatter. As I got up, I saw people relentlessly working out at the park. Some played tennis, while others walked in laps. A lot of people worked out on the public exercise equipment, as monkeys and dogs watched. I did my morning writing meditation as Murat walked around the park getting footage of the morning mayhem. That day, we got lots of videos of us dancing in the old town. When we thought we had enough, we got on a van and went back to Hatyai. We reached my place and started going through all the footage and thinking about the project we would make. The footage from that project never finalized until this video, part two of my five years in Thailand series. Throughout the two weeks or so that Murat stayed at my place, we had different adventures, shared experiences, and one very interesting cooperative incident. A few nights before he was supposed to leave, we went out to my friend's party. We were walking there when we heard something that rocked the foundations of our very existence. First, 
we heard this loud music. It immediately got both of our attention. Then, I recognized the warehouse the music was coming from. I had never seen that warehouse active or even open before. It was always this abandoned place I'd walked by. That day, it was far from abandoned, as lively dance music blared through the gate. We had started dance walking already by the time we reached the gate. Before we even took a look inside, we dance walked into the warehouse complex. We saw a dance floor in the center and dancers all around it. We were very well received by the group of dancers. It turned out that they were break dancers and that they were getting ready for an upcoming b-boy event. We found out that the event was scheduled for the same day that Murat had planned to leave. However, this new discovery changed everything. Originally, Murat was planning to leave on that upcoming Saturday because that's when his visa expired. He was going to spend his last month in Malaysia before returning to Turkey. The b-boy event made him change his plans. There was no way he could miss it. As both a dancer and a dance film creator, he needed to be there like monkeys need bananas. We stuck around that night and danced with the B-bros for a short while before heading back out to walk to my friend's party. We discussed potential timelines as we both wanted to be there. Murat changed his plans to cross the border on Friday and come back on Saturday. That way, he could be there for the event. This is also when he started considering spending his last month in Hatyai instead of Malaysia. I told him that I'd help him look for a room near my place. And that's exactly how it all unfolded. On Friday, I sent him to stay with the couchsurfing host I knew in Padang Besar. He came back on Saturday. When I got off work and walked to the event, he was already there, taking photos, mingling with the people there, and dancing. Murat moved in down the street from where I lived. We went to train with the break dancers at the warehouse every day for the first couple of weeks. The following couple of weeks, the b-boys moved back to their original training grounds, Jiranakon Stadium. That made it harder for us to train every day, but we persisted for a while. And then we started going less and less, until we both eventually stopped. Murat's last month was up, and he got on a plane back to Istanbul. I tried to continue training once in a while, but it finally stopped. I wish I could tell a story about perseverance and how to never quit. However, this isn't that story. This is a story about recognizing when something just doesn't suit you. It's not like I quit dancing. I continued dancing. I also kept in touch with the b-boys. One time, I made a dance video with one of the b-boys called Rubik. Another time, they honored me by inviting me on stage with them during their weekly gig at a nightclub. I filled in for the freestyle component. Dancing is something that both uses energy and recharges your system at the same time. I haven't stopped dancing to this day. As far as learning break dancing, it doesn't look like I'll be turning into a b-boy anytime soon. It's a good thing that B isn't the only letter in the alphabet. I can still be a T-boy, D-boy, or more closer to home, E-G-boy. There is more than one way of doing things, and the A path isn't meant for everyone. In this case, the B-boy path wasn't something that stuck with us. It's great to try new things, but it doesn't mean that every new thing you try will hit home. Taking a step out of your comfort zone shows you who you are and who you aren't. And both sides of that coin are necessary to knowing yourself.